Good morning. Uh, Today's scripture reading is the parable of the rich man from the Gospel of Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and said, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor honor your father and mother. He said to Jesus, teacher, I have kept all those since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Thanks be to God for these words of life. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we come before you this morning in a new season. Fall is in the air and we are surrounded by reminders of the world you created and the sights and smells and sounds of the season. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you this day and always. Amen. We continue our fall sermon series this morning with the theme of goodwill hunting, and we explore the role of faith in our lives. You may remember the movie, Goodwill Hunting. It's the story of a wayward young man named Will Hunting who struggles to find his identity. And Will is something of a genius. He can solve any problem except the one that is brewing deep within himself until one day he meets his soulmate who opens his mind and his heart. We encounter a similar story in our scripture reading this morning, the parable of the rich man. There Jesus is asked to, by a wealthy young man, what that man must do to get to heaven. And Jesus responds by telling him to obey the commandments. And the young man replies that he does follow the commandments. And so he asked Jesus again, what else must I do? And Jesus tells him to sell everything he owns, give the money to the poor, and to follow Jesus. But that ask is too great. And the young man leaves dejected and sorrowful. Now this parable is familiar to most of us. And it is also controversial, especially for us who live in the affluence of this community with everything in abundance. Now, it may sound silly, but many of us, myself included, take for granted that we have food and shelter and clothing and that we have all we need to live and in abundance. We have clean water and it's available in multiple locations in our homes. We have hot water on demand. We have electricity and lights and heat and air conditioning. We have all the modern conveniences of refrigerators and ovens and microwaves and dishwashers. We have trash pickup and the ubiquitous garage door openers. 
We have health care and unlimited education, cars and public transportation, entertainment of all kinds, including theaters and televisions and mobile phones and computers. Not to mention grocery stores and shopping malls and a Starbucks or a fast food restaurant on every corner. Or the wonders of online shopping and Amazon and daily, sometimes even same day, deliveries to your doorstep. We live at the top of the world from a financial perspective. Our incomes place us in the top 1% of the world's population. All of us, myself included, are wealthy beyond the wildest dreams of most of the rest of the world. So most of us might ask the question, what would we do if Jesus asked us to sell all of our possessions and to give the money to the poor and to follow him? Could we do that? Would we do that? Frankly, I'm not sure that is the right question. And even if it was, I don't think our answers, whatever they may be, yes, no, or maybe, would be the right answers either. The difficult choice that Jesus asked this young man to make is for the purpose of making a point. You see, Jesus can be taken literally to sell everything and follow him, but I think it's more than that. I think Jesus is asking the young man to do much, much more than that. So I'd like to explore for just a minute what is the commitment that God is asking the young man to make and what that commitment really means and how that can be applied to our everyday lives. First, Jesus answers the young man's question on how to achieve eternal life with this instruction, follow the commandments. And the young man said he does. But really, the young man does not follow the commandments, does he? What commandment did he not follow? He did not follow the first commandment, which is to put God first above all things, including money and possessions. But the young man could not do that, and I think Jesus knew that too. The young man valued his wealth above God, which is why he could not sell his possessions and become one of the disciples. But rather than calling the young man disingenuous or a liar, scripture says Jesus loved him. Now, doesn't that say it all? Jesus knew the man's weakness. He knew the man could not and would not give up his wealth in exchange for his soul. Yet Jesus did not rebuke him. Jesus instead loved him. And Jesus gave him the answer he needed to have eternal life. And the young man rejected Jesus and in so doing, rejected God. Now, I don't mean to suggest that Jesus is less concerned about money than saving souls. Frankly, Jesus talked more about money than any other subject except the kingdom of God. For example, 11 of his 39 parables talk about money. And one in every seven verses in the Gospel of Luke talk about money. As the scripture says, Money is the root of all kinds of evil. The second idea in this parable is that all things belong to God, including our wealth. Everything comes from God. Yet some of us think we, we worked harder or that we were smarter or that we were lucky or that we have some combination of all three and that is the reason or reasons for our success but it is not the reason when you put God first, because then you realize that all blessings flow from God. The commandment to put God first leads us to the principle of abundance. We have lots of stuff, but how much stuff do we really need? How many shirts or blouses do we need? How many cars do we need? How many houses do we need? How much stuff do we really need? 
God calls us to use our blessings for God's glory, not our own glory. And so we ask the question, are we a people rich in possessions and poor in spirit? The rich man certainly was. Tom Brady, the legendary football quarterback, had won three Super Bowls by the time he was 27 years old. At age 27, he had achieved his childhood dream of playing at the highest level of his sport. And he continues to achieve today, having now won a record seven Super Bowl victories at age 44. And yet, when he was interviewed about his success, he said, I do ask myself, I do ask myself, is that all there is? I wish I knew what else would make me happy. Over the years, we've heard many stories of success, and very often the question is very much, is that all there is? And that's my story. I climbed to the top of the legal profession as senior partner of the world's largest law firm. And then I asked myself, is that all there is? And something, at least for me, was missing. Finally, the parable points out that we, by ourselves, cannot find our own way. Rather, we must follow God's way. And God's way is through faith and trust in Jesus alone. In other words, heaven is not for sale. The rich man asked Jesus what he needed to do to achieve eternal life. He was looking for something to do to get to heaven. He was looking for something, not someone. And Jesus points him in the right direction. But Jesus is the way. The problem with the rich man was that he was trusting in his own goodness. He wanted to know what other good deeds he could do to inherit eternal life. So Jesus says, go, sell, and follow me. That was not possible for the rich man whose life was defined by his possessions. And Jesus is saying, make me your only possession. Then you'll have me because I am the way, the truth, and the life. But sadly, the rich man could not do it. He wanted a life of abundance, but could not part with the abundance of his life. He wanted a life of abundance, but he could not part with the abundance of his life. And then comes the hardest part of the scripture. Jesus said it will be difficult for the wealthy to enter the kingdom of heaven. Does this mean that the door to heaven is closed to the wealthy? No, it does not. It simply means that salvation is not up to us. It means that salvation cannot be earned. Heaven cannot be bought. Heaven is not for sale. So is Jesus telling us to sell all, to downsize, to minimize, to simplify, to make our lives so small that we can fit through the eye of a needle? Well, some of those things might relieve some of the stress in our daily lives. But eternal life is not up to us. It is up to Jesus. And it is up to us to have faith in Jesus. Finally, the parable says, Jesus loved him. Jesus did not rebuke the rich man for putting his possessions before his faith. Jesus did not reject him. Rather, Jesus loved him and called him to follow Jesus. The rich man thought God was waiting for him to do something, but all he really had to do was follow God. Most of us have heard of Warren Buffett, the billionaire from Omaha, Nebraska, and one of the world's richest 
people today. Buffett was asked whether his great wealth was the measure of his success. And Buffett replied, quote, love is the measure of success. When the people you want to love you do love you, then, and only then, you are successful. When Jesus was asked by the lawyer, Rabbi, which of the commandments are the most important? Jesus answered this question directly. First, to love God, and second, to love all others. And by loving God, our love is returned in every way. And by loving others, our love is returned in every way by others loving us. And so we end where we began, with goodwill hunting. Like the rich man, will hunting is searching for the meaning of life. And in the final scene of the movie, Will is asked, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And the movie ends with Will walking away, leaving the audience to wonder what will happen to him. And in the parable of the rich man, we are left with the same question. What will he do with the rest of his life? We know from the scripture that the young man left Jesus dejected and sorrowful because of the answer Jesus gave him. But like the movie, we do not know what he did next. Did he sell all of his possessions? Maybe he did, maybe he did not. But he did learn the answer to his question. He did learn the meaning of life. He did learn that following Christ is the answer and that Jesus loved him. And that has made all the difference. Amen.